Good evening guys, this is Samuel again and today I am going to walk you through how to configure GRE tunnel and, and um, GRE is just general rod and encapsulation tunnel which um, creates a logical tunnel between two uh, remote routers and makes it look as if those two routers were directly connected to each other. Um, what I have here is a simple setup of uh, two ISP routers and let's say two branch locations and what I'm going to do um, between X1 and X2 is create a tunnel that will make it look as if these two routers were physically connected together. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to kind of uh, emulate a point-to-point -point connection over this tunnel. So I'm trying to make this a little visual for you. So what I have here, this yellow is going to represent my tunnel. Okay, so this is the tunnel we're going to create and we call it the GRE tunnel. To create a GRE tunnel you need three basic things. The first one is the tunnel interface. You need to have a tunnel interface which is a logical interface on your router. All you gotta do is call up that interface and assign it an IP address. Okay. When you get your tunnel interface an IP address then you need to create a tunnel source. source. Of course, your tunnel source is where your, your tunnel is going to begin at. So, where your tunnel source usually is, it's usually your outbound interface on that router. Or you can assign it to a loopback interface on that router. Since your loopback is always up, you can have that up and going so that if your outbound interface changes, your loopback will still always be there. Okay. So, um, for this illustration, I'm just going to use the outbound interface. So, my source is going to be where, you know, on this end where my tunnel is going to start. My tunnel destination is going to be on the other side which is going to be here where my tunnel ends. Okay, so my tunnel destination is going to be 192.168.3.2 which will be right here. So these are the three basic components that you need on each end. So we'll have the same on this side. On this side we're going to have a tunnel interface. Once again it's a logical interface that you call up on this router and then you're going to have a tunnel source and then your tunnel source is going to be where your traffic is originating from, your outbound interface like we talked about earlier. Um, and then your tunnel destination is going to be where your tunnel is going to end. So once you have these three, you should be good to configure. Now the one very important thing that you need to remember, this is not going to work if your tunnel interfaces aren't on the same network. These two tunnel interfaces must be on the same network. Why? Because you are essentially emulating a point-to-point -point network and a point-to-point -point network or a directly connected network will usually be on the same subnet so that is one key thing that you need to remember so to configure this it's pretty simple we're going to configure a tunnel interface we're going to create a tunnel source and then we're going to create a tunnel destination we'll go over the other side and do the same and then I will show you how you can verify that your tunnel is actually created so let's go ahead and configure that I'm going to start on router x1 And um, before I continue, uh, I already have routed in between these uh, four routers using EIGRP, so I can ping from one end to the other just fine. You need to make sure that that is working first, okay? So successful from X2 to X1. Connection is there before you even start doing anything. Okay, so um, I use EIGRP to, you know, populate or advertise these routes. So once you have that done, then you can start tunneling. So here we go. So we're going to create our tunnel interface, so all we got to call is interface tunnel and then you can pick, if you do question mark, you pick, pick from 0 to whatever number you want, so I'm going to pick 1, okay, and then we're going to assign it an IP address of 10.10.10.1, forgive me. We got that done. Now we need to configure our tunnel source. So our tunnel source is going to be 182.168.1.1, but you cannot do that. It will not take that command. You need to use that interface. So this interface here is serial 000. So I'll say tunnel source is the interface name. If you use a loopback, you will say loopback 0 or loopback 1. So I'm going to say serial 0. Zero, 0 That is the IP address of that interface. Okay. And then you need a tunnel destination. 
your tunnel destination has to be an IP address okay so it will be that like we talked about on the other end so it's 192.168.3.2 is our tunnel destination okay once you do that you can see your tunnel interface come up now we're gonna have to go to the other side create our tunnel interface specify the source and then specify the destination so let's go over to the other end over here and let's configure the same thing Just here so I can see this. And like I said, the tunnel interfaces must be on the same network. So it is going to be dot two on that network. And then we need a source and destination. It's going to be our outbound interface here. So that's uh, the IP address is that, but we can't use the IP address. So we have to use the interface name. So we're going to say serial 0, 0, 0 is that interface. And then we need a destination. And our destination, once again, is right here where we're going to end that. So that's 192.168.1.1. So 192.168.1.1. Okay, we have that configured now you can actually show that interface to make sure it's configured so you can do show int tunnel tunnel we since we chose one okay that's going to be the interface and you can find out if it's configured properly okay you can see a tunnel source here and if I make it bigger you can see your destination so we know that the tunnel interface has been created properly the next thing we need to do is since we don't want to advertise our tunnel route over any dynamic routing protocol so our ISP can pick up on that we're going to create a static route from here to there okay and when we do that uh, it's going to push the traffic through the tunnel and it's going to make it look as if it is going from one hub just to the other hub so what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a static route from this network over to there okay so let's do that so we're going to configure a static route to right here the route um, 192.168.3.0.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
uh, tunnel interfaces uh, acting indeed as if they were directly connected to each other. So um, that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to leave them, feel free to subscribe. But um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be doing a few more. So feel free to check back. Thanks.